Good morning. Welcome back to The Closing Guys. We're back again with another short interview here. We're going to be talking about garage lentils and lentil lift and how that works. Welcome. Thanks for being on. We appreciate it. And I'm just going to make a mess Great. of everything here. Thanks for having me. So, tell me a little bit about your background and, and your business and uh, how it relates to home inspection. Okay. So... Let me first start with what a lentil is. Most uh, most people don't even know what that is. It's the the steel piece that kind of holds up the exterior of your house, the bricks. So the uh, the the headers and the the wood, the, the the sticks are the kind of the skeleton of the house, and the the outside or the bricks, the the outside fascia would be held up by by exterior things. And and, and around a garage door, that would be a a steel lentil that kind of spans that garage door span and holds it up. So our company manufactures a kit to repair a failed lintel. So on a double car garage, 16, 18 foot, even sometimes 20, uh, that that metal is insufficient to hold the weight of a of a of the bricks that are above it. It's about 50 pounds a square foot. So right. it starts to fail, starts to uh, to bow a little bit and uh, starts cracking in the bricks. So what are some of the mistakes that's made when installing lentils, you know, the right versus wrong practices there? So, so I, I would say everything is wrong because there's no codes that dictate what, what lentil goes in. So, for example, uh, there's many different types of houses in the neighborhood. You know, some, some of those houses may only have two or three or four bricks above the garage door. Right. And some are a gable end and they have, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet of bricks above it. Well, the same lentil is on both of those houses. Right. So it's not really an installation issue. It's really a product issue. That lentil may be sufficient for the smaller amount of bricks, but it's absolutely not sufficient for the larger amount of bricks. And there's no codes that dictate this many bricks has to be this thickness of, of lentil. So our system was designed and patented to fix that problem. Yeah, and so I guess what happens over time, the weight overwhelms the lentil, starts to sag. That's correct. We start seeing the cracking. That's correct. And the deflection. So, the, so it could actually ha start to happen during construction if they lay too much wet uh, mortar, too many uh, layers of courses of brick. That's correct. Above. We've seen the, houses as early as six months post-construction with a failure. Um, most of the, the failures occur in the five to ten year range, um, which actually gives the, the, the weight enough time to kind of start the bending process of that metal or start the deflection of that metal. Um, and then it's just downhill from there. The actual cracks that you're seeing or that you notice are really just a symptom of the problem. The deflection of that, of that steel is the problem. So... You know, some people are going to be seeing this interview that don't understand. I know that we have a lot of technical experts at the show here, but for a homeowner, is the cracking the main sign they're looking for? You know, what? How do, how do they know when their lentils fail? What's what's too much? So the cracking is going to be the the first indication. That's really what most people key in on. When a when a, a lentil deflects. The number's around three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch. You can start seeing it from the road or from the uh, from the sidewalk where uh, homeowners typically say that my garage is smiling at me, right? right. So it's deflecting in the center where that's the weakest point. So it kind of develops a smile, which really catches a lot of homeowners or home inspectors when they first pull up. They see that, and then they start looking for other things and then notice the cracks. Well, the good ones see it anyway, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so three-quarters of an inch is the amount when you say it needs some type of repair is that right that's correct well it, it's I, I would say that's when the engineers say it needs uh, a correct manufacturing the kit i think all houses need it but uh, the engineers uh, typically state that at three quarters of an inch deflection other problems start happening so there's enough movement in that brick structure to uh, change the load points from where they're designed to be so the house is actually shifting its load points to areas that uh, that aren't built or manufactured or designed to hold that much weight. Okay, so that's interesting. Three quarters of an inch deflection is is where other problems start to happen. So really a homeowner would, would want to fix it before that. So. All right, so they've got the problem. It's sagging. How does lintel lift work to fix the problem? So I'll go back to the smile. The, uh, the 
deflection is kind of creating a smile, and our system ha is cambered. Uh, first off, it's thicker steel. Thicker mm -hmm. steel, heavier grade steel, bigger steel. So bigger is always better. We, we camber it or bend it, so when our kit's installed, our, our kit is kind of like a frowny face that's meeting the smiley face of, uh -huh. you know, a lot of technical terms here. Yeah, I see we're right. getting yeah. really right. deep in the technical <laughs> stuff. If I lose y'all, just let me know and I'll, I'll dumb it down. Um, uh, so they, they, they kind of meet in the middle, right? The, the mm -hmm. bottom of the smile, the, the top of the frown. So when we install our, our columns on each side and we lift those sides, where it's meeting in the middle, we're kind of flattening out or leveling out our frowny face, which is naturally pushing up and returning those bricks to their original location of the smiley face. Okay. So what that also does is after we're level, we're, we're providing complete support all the way across the span, but it also has an upward lift type motion to it. So there's no way it's going to be a smiley face again or fail and, and have deflection to it because of that upward continuous spring that's that's designed in. And that's really where our three patents come into this system is is in the installation, in the camber, and in, in the in the lift of it. Okay, that's very cool. So does that mean they're going to have a big old piece of heavy angle iron on the outside of the house now, or is there a way that it cosmetically gets fixed as well? Well, all of our structural steel is hidden behind our vinyl wrap, so it, it, okay. it has uh, a lot of design features into that where it has some, some depth and some contour, but it is uh, UV protected, so it's not going to fade, and it is also paintable. So uh, it's manufactured in white, which is the majority of the, uh, the houses have oh, white trim, trim. Yeah. Um, but it can be painted to whatever color the, uh, the house needs to be. So there's a, a column on either side, and then you have the, the lintel. Is it a, is, does the lintel, is it L-shaped? Is it, a, it is. It is an angle iron. In, does it fit up in behind? The it's actually on the, the face of the house or it's the gonna, front okay. side. All right, so it'd be out over the face of the brick. Correct. So the, Usually a soldier course across. Um, 22% of the time we have a soldier course. Okay. So it's, it's not often, but it is a regular occurrence. Okay. And... The reason we go on the outside is is that that lintel that's in there is usually a quarter inch, so it's it's really thin, small metal, but it still has structural value. It's already there. If we were to take it out, you know, we're removing some support, some support that the house already has. So we want to leave it in there and just put it back in its original location, and then really provide adequate support so the the problem doesn't happen again. So I heard three-quarter inches of minimum, what would be the maximum that you could actually correct? So the the worst house that I've seen uh, in the 900 kits that we've installed since 2014 um, was three and a quarter inches of deflection. Whoa. That, that home, we, we looked at it. It was actually in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we looked at it, I think it was a Tuesday, and, you know, told the owner that, you know, you really have an issue here. I would not it's really not safe you know don't go in and out keep your cars outside um that night that whole fascia fell off of the uh, fell off of the garage so he had to rebuild it he actually did buy a kit and and we put it in for him so he wouldn't have that issue going forward but yeah we were one day late so once the the lift is in place the trim is around that what about the cracks what so the, the cracks go away because we're providing lift and we're moving uh, that fascia, those bricks back into their original location, the cracks go away. Okay. So if there was a, a repair, really a, a band-aid fix is a tuck point where you just kind of fill those cracks back in. We will grind that out because we need that vertical space to move the bricks back in the original location. Yeah. So tough question. Is there some collateral issues like additional cracking that happens from moving brick do you see some of that go on that has to be repaired after no because we're putting the bricks back where they want to be okay. we're putting them back where they started so there's no additional cracks it's just the the cracks that are there close back up and that i guess your installation process helps do that in a slow enough controlled enough way that's not that's correct. Cool. So to, to, to address that tuck point, you know, the, the cracks, you'll, you'll still be able to see them so we can put tuck point and, and repair those cracks. But we like to wait two to three months. A lot of that depends on the climate. 
um, and where we're at in, in, in the country um, to allow those bricks to reacclimate and go through a, a heating and cooling cycle, expansion and contraction, so that they, they truly go back to where they started um, before we repair the cracks. So, tell me about installation. If you, you guys are the ones that do all the installs once you design the, the repair, then you, you do all the installs? So, that? we, we are the manufacturer of the kit, so we sell through a dealer network, okay. um, and we typically partner with foundation repair companies. Okay. Um, and, and the reason the home inspectors are so important is they see this on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that there, there really isn't another repair. The, the alternative repair to ours, which is the right repair, is to tear all the bricks off, put another lintel in, put the bricks back Properly on. Properly sized. Some of the obvious problems are, you know, you're, you have a... 10, 20 year old house, the bricks aren't going to match. Even if you can get the same color, they're not weathered. It's, there's going to be a little difference in that. So that's really going to stick out. And then to the, the, the problem that I can't get past is you're repairing your failed system with another system that's the same. Mm -hmm. So you can expect the same failure that you're correcting in the same amount of time. Yeah. So how does this apply to new construction? So new construction is a little different. There's not any weight you know, pulling down or pushing down, there's no gravity. So we install the exact same kit, we just pull the camber out of our kit because there's nothing to, to, to pull against it. So we know we can calculate how much weight's above it. We have our engineering staff that, that kind of gives us the exact number. We have a load cell that we actually pull the camber out of the system so that it's level when we leave and we just tie it off with cables. The mason comes and puts all the bricks above the uh, above the lintel, which actually provides that weight to pull it down. Then, when we take our cable off, there's no spring; it's it's preset for the uh, for the weight that's above it. On the new construction example, would the lintel then be behind the brick, like like a normal install? Is it would. A, okay. It would. Okay. So the the answer for the future is use a system that's engineered for the weight. That's correct. But if you already have a problem, your problem can address that. Your system can address that problem that's as correct. well. That's correct. So how do they get in touch? How do they find out more about Lintel Lift? So the best way is is just through our website at lintellift.com. Uh, we have all of our dealers listed on there, so you can do a, a quick search by zip code, find the local dealer, and then, uh, and then contact them for installation. Awesome. Well, I think this is very helpful stuff. We certainly find a lot of damaged lintels in, in our inspections and all that, and We'll be sure to direct them your way. Thanks for sitting down and talking with Absolutely. us, man. Absolutely. Thank pleasure. you.